Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's reviews for Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 6. This video is a part of a series of videos where I review every episode of Star Wars The Clone Wars. In this video I will review every episode of Season 6 of The Clone Wars. So, um, I talked about before I watched, um, Star Wars The Clone Wars. I got a review uh, email from my sister who watched it and she said that it was, that was really great that there's good episodes throughout the whole show but she particularly talked up the end of season 5 and the start of season 6 and then the end of season 6 and then the end of season 7. So I talked about that in my season 5 review and how I was like sorely disappointed in season 5 because <laughs> there was so much crap uh, in season 5. But I had several people remind me saying no, it's not that every episode of season 5 was amazing. It was just the end of season 5 and that's what she did tell me. And I didn't come into season 5 expecting every single episode of season 5 to be amazing. every single, But uh, having those 8 pieces of shit like having basically half the season totally suck like that was way more <laughs> even though like you know she never told me or no one ever told me that all of season five was a masterpiece but still like i was expecting more than simply than half of the season being complete crap and and also maybe i didn't think the end of season five was as great either so i was i was came in kind of disappointed in season five and i'm bringing it up now because what i was expecting more out of season five and six and maybe seven which i haven't watched seven yet was what i got in season six this is what i was expecting i not every episode was the masterpiece and it's not there were some there were some bad episodes there were some mediocre episodes um but it was mostly good like it was mostly a really good season it's not like half the season was crap <laughs> like season five was but it was the beginning was really good just like she told me and the end was really good and the middle's kind of mediocre and there was you know some bad episodes in there too but just a little bit like it wasn't like and even the bad episodes weren't completely terrible like they weren't the worst thing this show has ever done such as the bad episodes in season five was the worst thing the show has ever done um so i stand by my disappointment in season five but this is like season six this is what i was looking forward to this is exactly what i was expecting i wasn't expecting every episode to be a masterpiece and it's not um but it was overall a great season it was overall a really good season and so i do think that season six is my favorite season uh, of the Clone Wars so far. Now, it does kind of help that there's only 13 episodes. <laughs> so it's like half the length of a uh, normal season of Clone Wars is. So it's kind of less time to have mediocrity or, or crap. Um, but even so, it still could be comprised of mostly mediocrity and crap, but it's not. Um, so, so yeah, so this is kind of the quality of season that I was expecting, but that being said, I still get the impression that I liked it a little less <laughs> than my sister did, maybe not, I don't know, and a little less of what, what other people did, because even though I liked it, I don't think it's like a masterpiece, um, but it was good, <laughs> it was definitely good, I will say that, um, so, season six, um, aired on netflix originally because apparently like talked about this in my season five review season five aired when uh disney got the rights to it and so disney didn't want uh cartoon network which was their rival airing their property so they pulled it um but they were able to put it on netflix for season six because i believe this was already in production and so um they uh they allowed them to release it on Netflix. However, um, season seven didn't come for another six years uh, or four years, whatever it was. I think it was six years. Um, so this was the final season for a long time. <laughs> and I kind of 
I would be disappointed by this being the final season. Um, and it does sound like, from what I've heard of season seven, that they um, that they did wrap it up really well, and it does feel like a final season. Um, where this, it could pass as one, but there's a few things that um, I felt would have been too left open. The main thing is Ahsoka Tana. Uh, Ahsoka Tana doesn't appear in the season at all, <laughs> which which I've found a bit disappointing, so they don't really resolve her storyline, so it kind of ends where with her just leaving like she did at, um, and, uh, at the end of season five. Um, but there's some things I really like about this season. One of the reasons why I think it's, it is my favorite season so far is because there's a few things we don't see in here that I'm glad we don't see, such as we don't get those stupid pirates uh, the the Handu or whatever the hell that guy's name was I can't, I don't I can't stand those pirates and I I wasn't a huge fan of um what's his face Kaz Bane or whatever his name is either he just showed up in Boba Fett but um yeah we don't get him and I was I was glad about that and so and there's also like some other reoccurring crap like like little kids running the younglings or whatever that we got last season that we don't get um and even through like the the bad episodes it is still mostly a mature show and i think it having aired on netflix i think did factor into it so they weren't really trying as hard to appeal to younger audiences as they were when it aired on cartoon network at least i got that impression um because you know i talked before about how some of the stuff even like back to season three were like so adult that was like so much more mature than young audience should be watching but at the same time they still even in last season throwing crap that's meant for like seven year olds <laughs> where uh they didn't really do that um at all this season in my opinion so so yeah i actually i actually really like this season um so let's go ahead and get into it and so um the season begins with an episode called The Unknown. Uh, this is when... Now, this starts a four-episode-long arc, as, you know, Clone Wars tends to do, uh, about a, a clone who... is Order 66 is prematurely set off. Uh, and I think that's a, that's a very interesting concept. And that's another thing I'll say I like about Season 6. Because Season 6, and I complained about this a lot in the earlier seasons, particularly 1, 2, and 3, that there will be the, the episodes in the show will be about a conflict, a, a battle going on that involved in the Clone Wars, which we don't really care about because we all know that the war is subterfuge for <laughs> the uh, Lord Sidious to take over um the republic can turn it into the empire so the individual battles that are involved in clone wars are kind of irrelevant and it's, it was hard for me to get invested in them and i season six mostly focuses on that reveal that you know is coming which are some positives and some negatives to that which i'll get to later but um yeah, so that's another thing I like about season six and this story arc that it you know addresses the kind of preambles order sixty six and it makes sense actually that if this was built in from the clones from the beginning, which it kind of had to be, um, that something could have gone wrong with it and it malfunctioned and when the clones like get the urge to kill Jedi's before the order is actually given and. Um, I think that's really cool, <laughs> and I think uh, the way that this whole um, four episodes handled this was done really well. Now, the first episode, The Unknown, of course, deals when the uh, clone Tup uh, kills the uh, a Jedi out of nowhere, and he's acting like he's sick, and he's acting they're acting like a compulsion, and so the um, the Jedi think that it's. Um, that the, that particular clone was brainwashed, was captured by the Separatists and brainwashed to do it. But of course, you know, it's built into him. 
which they don't know, and of course the, um, you know, Dooku and Sidious find out about this, and they do whatever they can to try to stop them from doing that. Now, when I said there were, like, negatives to sort of playing off of what is going to happen is that as much as I do like the season, it probably is the season that has prequel-itis the most, because in a lot of cases... We know that this can't happen because we already know what happens next. So we know that the Jedi and the Republic are not going to find out about Order 66 because they don't know what it is when it happens. Uh, unless, of course, they retconned it and changed it, which I'm sure they did, did won't. So it's kind of got a bit of prequelitis that we know that they're not, that Dooku and um, Sidious would be successful. And it is interesting that Dooku was involved and knew about Order 66 because that's not something I really knew about. I kind of, honestly, I kind of got the impression that maybe Dooku believed in the, the Separatists or whatever because he's leading them, that he didn't wasn't aware that Sidious was um, Chancellor Palpatine. But this episode makes it very clear that he does know and he does know the ultimate plan. Uh, maybe, you know... There was hints about this before, not just in the Clone Wars, maybe the movies, but I I didn't catch that. I wasn't actually sure about that um, until this episode itself. Uh, so it was interesting uh, that they cleared it up. And, of course, uh, the episode itself has a friend to uh, Top uh, Fives who uh, is worried about Top and so goes with him to... Um, when the Jedi decide to take him back to um, Kamino, well, you know, Dooku tries to capture them, but the Skywalker captures him back, and they go to ship him to Kamino to be uh, for the cloners to study them. But of course, it's not actually much better <laughs> because the cloners are also in cahoots with uh, Dooku, who they call Lord Tyrannus. Uh, so that leads, so yeah, so this was a good episode, great start for the season, that leads to the next episode, which is Conspiracy, uh, that deals with them being on, um, being on, um, Camino, where they're, um, trying to figure out what to do with Top, but they, the cloners want to kill him, and say, oh, it's a virus, it's definitely a virus, let's, let's kill him, and so we can do study the you know the viral infection which they are of course lying because they're trying to cover up they're working for Sidious and Dooku and they don't want the Jedi to find out that they have this chip in them that's programmed to kill them but the Jedi thinks it's uh, that the mind was tampered with and uh, they want to do like a mind scan and the cloner is trying to kind of stop them from doing that because they're worried they will find the the pre-programming which of course the viewer knows not going to happen because we've seen what comes next but anyway <laughs> so a little bit of prequelitis but anyway um meanwhile we got fives who is um in the next room and he sort of makes a friendship with this droid which i really liked i actually like this droid this droid is into like great contrast to the droid who appeared in, in season five who was in that four-parter where he was being an idiot and a moron and god i hated that so much it was definitely the worst thing the show has ever done um where this droid i mean it was kind of similar to him but in a way that wasn't nearly as annoying and actually worked for the story, I mean, it helped that they, he wasn't the only character who could actually speak, uh, <laughs> and his interactions with Fives were actually really good, and so they kind of worked together to try to, Fives kind of snip it, slip in, and try to discover what was really wrong with them, and they discovered the chip, which they refer to as a tumor, because they think it's a tumor, and then when uh, the cloner discovers the droid doing that they're like oh you're defective you're not doing your programming and the droid tries to no look there's a tumor and uh, the cloners are very dismissive of course because they know what it is they know it's a chip so um so yeah so that was very interesting and but then eventually um uh fives removes the tumor um 
and that actually results in Tup's death, which which they're shocked by, and and they're discovered, and the cloners kind of want to kill fives now as well, but the Jedi are against it, and they want to send them back to uh, Coruscant. So again, another really good episode. So then we get into the uh, next episode, which is Fugitive, uh, and I really, this is probably my favorite of this four part. I really like this episode. This deals with Fives and uh, the droid, and I love their interactions uh, on the run and trying to um, uncover the conspiracy about what's really going on, and uh, Fives sort of gets the impression that there is a conspiracy and they're being hunted by both the Jedi and by the cloners. Uh, and yeah, it's just an exciting episode and I love the camaraderie between the droid and Fives and how they work together and they pretty much uncover the, that this is a conspiracy for from the uh, cloners to, to hurt the Jedi, ultimately. Although he doesn't have quite all the pieces. Uh, and that leads into the next episode, uh, Orders, which is probably my least favorite, I would say, of these four episodes, because uh, Five starts to go a bit off the deep end. He comes off as a crazy person, Anakin and everyone. It's when they go back to Coruscant and he escapes and Anakin hunts for them. And all him and all the Jedi are convinced that Fives is just not so, but he actually has it correct. It's kind of like the Cassandra... Uh, syndrome, which I don't really like that uh, story, that dynamic, because it's just frustrating to watch when you know they're correct, but no one will believe them. And then the way that Fives comes off as crazy, you gotta believe me, you have to get me blood. He's obviously coming off as a loon, and that kind of bothered me as well. But it's still, it was still really an exciting story. Uh, and of course, it ends tragically, as we know it will, because prequitis. But, <laughs> but it was still um, it, it was a decent conclusion to a really great story arc. So then we'll get into the next episode, which is an old friend. Now this kicks off a trilogy of episodes that is fine, I guess. I mean, it's. Let me be honest, it brings back this character of Clovis who I didn't like in the first place and didn't really care about. And it deals with bankers and, and um, financial institutions. And I know, I'm sure it has some commentary to be made about how, uh, you know, fi finances control war and motivate war. But I think this, this is, uh, that particular commentary was handled in better than better episodes that I talked about previous, I believe it was season four, um, where this, this trilogy of episodes just came off as, uh, boring, <laughs> gotta be honest, and, and, oh, there's bankers, and whenever they started talking about the specifics of the financial institutes, so my eyes just glazed over, and it kind of reminded me of, uh, jokes I've heard about the Phantom Menace, about, oh, the trade routes, the uh, institutions with <laughs> trade routes is something that kids are really love, or <laughs> negotiations like this, again, I guess they're trying less to be a kid's show now, but still, it's just like, who would find this? What kid would find this interesting? Uh, so, in this episode, of course, you know, Padme um, deals, I don't know, whatever. Uh, we'll get to the next episode, which is The Rise of Clovis. Ooh, now he rises because it, they start a, you know, they're tricking him, Dooku. And again, this is kind of a. Uh, what they're doing with the war sort of has a way for Sidious to take over the Republic. They kind of do this in a smaller scale for, uh, they do this, you know, battle, whatever, to try to take over the financial system where, um, the bankers are, you know, at it because they were, you know, doing stuff they shouldn't be doing and there actually was no money so everyone was like oh let's make Clovis the head of the bank and they made Clovis the head of the bank and um and it turns out to be a trap or whatever I don't know anyway <laughs> next episode was crisis at the heart um 
I, was it this episode or the previous episode? I'm not sure. One of these episodes I had, I think it was the previous one actually, where Anakin came in, saw Padme and Clovis together, almost to kiss, and he started freaking the fuck out and beating the shit out of them, which is good sort of setup for the, the Anakin's dark side, something that the show doesn't touch on enough. Um, and of course, Padme wanted nothing to do with him because of that. Um, but then in this episode, they kind of need. And it can help because they see that Clovis is being framed by uh, Dooku, and uh, and they're just using it as a you know chance to for um, and you know this is combined with Palpatine sending sending the Senate there. They're using it as an excuse for the Republic to completely take over the finances and. And, can, and so cities will have control over the financial institutions and try to stop them. And it leads with um, Anakin holding on to both Clovis and Padme, and, and Clovis sacrifices himself to save her. And I guess kind of interesting. I suppose I don't know. I mean, these, this truly wasn't terrible, but kind of boring. <laughs> Next, um, we'll get into. Um, Next episode, The Disappeared Part 1. Yay! Jar Jar Binks is back. Oh boy, can I love it. But I gotta tell you, Jar Jar Binks is nowhere near as bad as that stupid droid who was in Season 5. I kind of... That droid made me appreciate Jar Jar Binks more. Or at least made me hate him less. And this, you know, this um, two-parter was actually not that bad. It didn't really annoy, it didn't ad actively annoy me nowhere near as much as the ones in Season 5 did. Um, I mean, it was dumb, <laughs> because, I mean, it was kind of interesting because he had this alien race who are Force users, but they, they don't use it for um, combat at all. They use it more for meditation. And that was an interesting concept to introduce a different kind of force users and they didn't trust the Jedi at all, but they trusted Jar Jar. And I, I actually thought that made it a little interesting dynamic where the, especially the queen was just like, oh, Jar Jar will listen to whatever you say whenever Windu tried to say something. Like, shut up, Jedi! We're not listening to you. We only listen to Jar Jar. Kind of dumb. <laughs> kind of interesting. But of course, Jar Jar himself is always annoying and me so want to do da 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 what I, I just just the cadence of his voice grates on the nerves but um but but this episode was yeah it was kind of interesting and they it was a set up an interesting mystery where the force users kept getting disappearing and getting adopted and leading windu on this investigation uh and that leads us into uh Next episode, The Disappeared Part 2, which I liked better uh, because we get the reintroduction of the Night Sister. Then we find out that she's behind this and she's trying to um, bring, you know, come back from the dead or whatever and use all the Force powers to gather it up. And it was pretty, uh, you know, exciting chasing with, with um, Jar Jar and Windu chasing the, you know, these other people to try to try to stop them from doing that um so it was entertaining at the same time as being highly annoying <laughs> with Jar Jar and his his antics um but again like this isn't the worst Jar Jar episode I've seen it, it's nowhere near as bad as the crap that they had in season five <laughs> so if this is the worst they got it's not so bad actually to be honest so, uh, that leads us to the next episode, which is called The Lost Ones, where they actually finally try to address that storyline from Attack of the Clones that never made any freaking sense to me about Sifo Diaz, which I did not understand who that was, why did, they set, why did he start to clone to whatever, and they actually start to plug in some of these plot holes and try to explain some of these things that we get. as a great way to start the episode with the Jedi sort of investigating this, you know, discovered... Um, craft ship that was uh, destroyed and it would it maintain the clues of what happened to Cypher Diaz and that leads um, Anakin and um, Obi-Wan to investigate um, which is very interesting and it leads them uh, to um, the Pike 
Syndicate, which um, I'm watching Book of Boba Fett at the same time as uh, I watched this. I was like, hey, those are the guys from Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> so they actually appeared here first, and that's why they get I don't know if they appeared in Clone Wars previous to this. Maybe they did, I just didn't notice. But when I saw it, I was like, hey, those, yeah, those are the guys from Book of Boba Fett. I think seeing how they look in animated form makes me think they didn't do the best job of translating that look into um, live action, but whatever. <laughs> um anyway yeah so it was, it, i actually really enjoyed them i thought it was interesting how they um they were being all sly about it it's like yes we we're hired to kill the jedi but we we kept the his uh the guy who worked for him has collateral um and they kept referring to a lord tyrannus and anakin and uh what's his face obi-wan <laughs> had no idea who lord tyrannus it was just also who uh jango fett mentioned back in attack of the clones and i had no idea who it is but they finally reveal that's dooku because dooku shows up and they're all referring to him as lord tyrannus they're like oh my holy god you're freaking and again this is episode has a bit of prequel itis because you know, Dooku and Sidious are worried that they'll uncover that the um, the clones, this is all plot, the clones were created by Sidious as a plot, and the war was started as a plot so Palpatine could take over, um, you know, and form the Empire, but of course they're not going to discover that because they don't. We know what happens next, prequelitis. But <laughs> it's still really fascinating, still really interesting episode. Uh, really exciting, especially the fight we get with the, the Pikes are actually fighting against um, the Pikes Syndicate, fighting against Dooku, and uh, like um, at the same time, Obi-Wan and uh, Anakin. is so it's a pretty epic fight, too, especially when Dooku runs on the ship and, and Anakin you know jumps on the ship, too, to try to chase him, and he just destroys the ship to get away. Like, Yeah, so I really like this episode. A uh, really good one. So... That leads into the next episode, Voices, uh, where Yoda, this leads into, um, builds off the other one, leads to Yoda uh, getting a sort of message from uh, Qui-Gon Jinn, uh, telling him to go to Dagobah, and so you will go to the Dagobah system. <laughs> anyway, um, and this, this, this next three episodes kind of plugs in the plot hole about how at the end of uh, Revenge of the Sith, out of nowhere, Yoda's like, hey, I got some training for you. Uh, I was visited by an old friend, Qui-Gon Jinn, he's going to teach you how to, um, you know, stay, maintain your force form after death. Um, and that came out of nowhere, <laughs> and the, these three episodes actually do a really good job of, of making that more tangible, making that make sense, uh, and we actually see that, um, and when I first heard Qui-Gon Jinn, I was like, that sounds like Liam Neeson. If that's not Liam Neeson, then they got someone who sounds, who does a really good impersonation of him, but I looked it up, and it is Liam Neeson. And I think this, as far as I know, this is the only time they got a the actual actor who appeared in the movie to appear in the show. And I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah, and it, and so uh, you get the whole uh, spiritual journey that Yoda goes to. He goes to Dagobah and uh, the scenes with the uh, Qui John, you know talking to him and saying how to you know how what it's all about how to, how he has to go on this quest to try to learn how to become a force ghost basically uh after he dies and how powerful it is and, and how which is it is a major part of the original trilogy that the uh that obi-wan yoda can just turn to force ghosts and you think that it, it's something and in fact, I think it's kind of implied in the trilogy that it's something that all Jedi do, but in the prequels, they reveal that it's not, that it's just something that they just kind of learn to do in between the two trilogies. Uh, and so this sort of draws that out more and explains it more, and it was pretty damn cool. Uh, which leads us to the next episode, Destiny, uh, where Yoda goes with R2-D2. Now, it does make me wonder why... If R2 is like, you know, 
goes on all these adventures with Yoda, how come in Empire Strikes Back he didn't recognize him and just tried to steal that thing and go, mine, mine, maybe R2 was playing along, or, or did they wipe R2's memories as well, C-3PO's, they never said they did. Anyway, <laughs> um, so, the but that's, uh, I don't really care about that. So anyway, um, this was a really cool episode. I like this one even more. It, it was uh, so Yoda goes to this like you know energy beam and he flies into it and goes into this planet and there's like this heating energy whatever and he flies down there and he uh, meets up with these uh, like other sort of guardians, the Force ghosts or whatever <laughs> they are um, that that take him on this quest and this journey is really psychedelic and trippy in it and that's the scene i love the most is when yoda has to physically fight his dark side like that scene was so good where you had like this like shadowy version of yoda who talks like yoda i love the yoda grammar by the way he talks like yoda but he's like twisted and dark and they actually have to fight each other and then uh, yoda's first part of me you are not and but then that just makes him stronger and yoda has to realize that he the way to defeat him is to acknowledge that they, he is part of him and he but the, but he can overcome that part of them and it, it's, it's a very spiritual um, episode and, and, and it's done so in a very powerful meaningful way not just a nonsense way um, which I think the force often especially in the Clone Wars is not handled very well uh, the spiritual side of things and this really does like I thought it was a very strong um, story metaphorical wise and just a strong uh, character story for Yoda uh, and of course and he all the trials he has to go through and then eventually he's told by the force ghost that he has to travel to um to the home world of the Sith and it kind of it does is very reminiscent of Return of the Jedi when Yoda tells Skywalker Luke Skywalker that he has to def uh, defeat Vader in order to become uh, a Jedi where Yoda has to sort of go feed his, to face his foes in order to master this training. Uh, it's pretty great stuff. So that leads us to the next episode, uh, the finale of the season, which I am glad wasn't the finale of the entire show. Um, Sacrifice, where Yoda does in fact go to the Sith home world, and it's very dark and spooky and kind of messed up, and he meets this like, I am the original Sith. I still think the rule of two is bullshit, personally. Like, they try to justify it in this episode, but I, I think it's nonsense. But anyway, he said, I created the rule of two, and Yoda's like, alive, you are not. You are not. <laughs> Whatever, and, and so he gets away so that that all was real cool but then you had um lord city and um dooku sort of create these who are really trying to kill yoda because they see that he is, is actually on the sith home world so they try to use their sith abilities to kill him they give him this false vision of like you know, um, Anakin Skywalker dying and trying to protect them, but uh, it doesn't work because they find out that Yoda is too powerful for them, and he manages to survive and and talks to the Force Ghosts who say that they that he can now complete his training, that Qui Gon will guide him the rest of the way, and he will learn to be a Force Ghost, and he goes back to the um, to the Jedi Temple, and he won't really tell them the full. Uh, story of because he kind of he had those visions of what would happen in the future uh, where he saw that the, the Jedi would be killed and that Anakin would betray them but I don't know if he knew that it was definitely going to happen or if it was a possible future again the prequel itis in these four episodes however come in when they're trying to discover who Lord Sidious really is uh, and we know they're not because we they don't know that it's Chancellor Palpatine so we know Prequelitis, we know that's not going to happen, but it was still good. And then Yoda has a really, really great line uh, at the end um, where he says that um, when asked, "Are we going to win this war?" and Yoda's like, "You know, I come to realize that." The, and he says in his Yoda way, "Of course, realize I have <laughs> that, that there is no winning a war; that you can't win a war 
that war is not something to be won, uh, but there is a path forward. And he is, they're kind of hinting at, you know, the end of Return of the Jedi or whatever, but uh, he doesn't know this specifically, but he knows that this, it's going to be a long game kind of thing. Um, and that was really cool. I, I did really, really like that episode. Uh, I thought it was pretty awesome. So that's it. We're in, at the end of the season already. I am. I was a bit disappointed, actually, that the season was so short uh, compared to other seasons. But, oh, well, I, in a way, it made it better. So now, as always, I'll get into my least favorite episodes of the season and my favorite episodes. Uh, we'll start with my least favorite episodes of the season, which, of course, was the Disappeared, Part 1 and 2, obviously. <laughs> Uh, but out of the two, I think the Disappeared Part 1, uh, I'm going to have to name that the worst episode of Season 6, um, because Part 2 at least had the Night Sisters, which was kind of cool, but Part 1 was had a lot more of Jar Jar going, Misa, blah, 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 and that shit's annoying. But as I said, it's not, it's not the worst episode in the world. There's definitely been more terrible episodes <laughs> in previous seasons than this one, so this is the worst the season's got. It's not so bad. Anyway, um, as for best episode of uh, the season, there's a lot of great episodes this season. You got The Unknown, you got Conspiracy, you got Fugitive, you got uh, Sacrifice, The Lost One, when we're looking for uh, Cypherdeus. But as for the best episode of season six, I'm going to say it's Destiny. Uh, and the, where, the, where uh, Yoda goes to the, you know, the magical glowy place and, and has to do this spiritual journey to try to discover. Uh, and he has to face, like, I just think that scene where he had to, like, fight off against the dark part of himself was amazing. Uh, absolutely a high point of the series. Um, definitely a really great episode, so... That is my pick for uh, best episode of season six. Now, as for my rating for um, season six out of ten, um, you know, I want to cop out and do 0.5 and say 8.5, but I, I'm going to stick to my policy of not doing decimal points. I gotta go all in on an eight or nine, and it's a tough choice, but I think I'm gonna go in on an eight. Uh, extremely good. Uh, almost want to give it a nine because that ending was so powerful, and and the start of the season was pretty good too. But those Clovis stuff was boring, and the Jar Jar stuff was dumb. So <laughs> I do have to round down to an eight, unfortunately, but still. Yeah, I think this was definitely the best season of Clone Wars so far. Um, it's definitely uh, more dark, more powerful. Maybe because it aired on Netflix, they geared it more towards adults and less towards kids. But yeah, I, th I thought this was a really strong season of the Clone Wars. So I really appreciate it. So that is it for my review of Star Wars Clone Wars Season 6. I shall return next month to cover the final season, Season 7, which I'm very excited for, I must say, even though I know that not every episode is going to be an amazing masterpiece. There's probably going to be some boring mediocrity and stuff like that in there, too. That's fine. I'm still very much cannot wait uh, for season seven, uh, and I shall return next month uh, to talk about that season as well. So thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, please uh, check out my channel as I cover many other shows such as all things Star Trek, uh, The Expanse, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.